Welcome back to The Good Life Journey. In today's video, we're offering 20 simple ideas to save money with food. Let's go! And we have double good news today because by implementing some of these ideas, you will not only save a lot of money today, but you will take little steps toward creating a lifestyle that is better for the environment mainly through saving food waste. Food waste contributes around 8 to 10% of global greenhouse gas emissions. What does this mean? If food waste were a country, it would be the third largest global emitter after China and the US. All right, let's talk about saving money. I've left one of the best ideas for the end, so be sure to stick around. I will also share at the end of the video how much money we throw out the window through food waste and give us a simple methodology so that you can estimate it too. Let's go. Number one is meal planning. Meal planning avoids impulse buying and it means devoting a little bit of time each week to plan for the meals ahead. Write down a very detailed list of ingredients that you need for a very specific number of meals. Some may say here that they don't have time to organize themselves. Well, sorry to break it to you, but if you're shopping multiple times per week, you certainly have quite a bit of time and you are wasting it. Shop, try to shop only one time a week and stick to it. And brace yourself for a groundbreaking insight. Number two, choose your supermarket wisely. Of course, the food cost varies strongly across supermarkets. And although you may be receiving marginally higher quality products, keep in mind that in many countries, these higher prices are also explained by just by staffing a higher number of colleagues within the shopping premises. Are you willing to wait a little bit more in the till to can gather a lot of money savings. Number three, be careful with existing sales. It is very easy to make unplanned purchases when you find a lot of items on offer. Remember, keep calm and stick to the plan. Number four, don't show up hungry at the supermarket. A lot of markets in different, in different countries actually increase the scent of their products, for example, of baking bread, because this is known to whet the appetite of their consumers and lead to longer term AS sales. If your market is offering free samples, excellent. Continue with your shopping and once you're done and ready to go to the checkout, stop by again and treat yourself for whatever they're offering. Checkmate. Another groundbreaking insight for number five, buy in bulk. For non-perishable items, consider larger quantities, which will give you overall better prices. Number six, consider discount apps and payback point programs. This varies a lot country to country, of course, but for example, Lidl has an app that offers um, weekly discounts. It offers 10 to 15 different coupons, some of which match your past history of purchases. So go ahead and take full advantage of this. The best way to do this is to incorporate this into your weekly meal planning. And beware of the payback points systems of fancier stores. Of course, it's better to use them than to not, but it is still much better just to not go to that store in the first place. Number seven, buy food in season. Play the laws of supply and demand to your advantage and avoid overpriced items that are out of season. Be careful also to avoid early harvest produce. For example, strawberries, uh, hold your fire and wait a couple weeks before the price gets reasonable. I find it quite useful here to have a seasonal calendar, which we use here in our household. It has roughly 50 to 60 different products and it gives you the months of the year where they're in season. And it's a really easy way to, to sort of keep track in this way. Also, this applies for imported products. You don't want to have a seasonal calendars of every single country, but the, for the products that you like to eat, I don't know, kiwis, mangoes, these do vary in price very strongly throughout the year. So it's important to have a little bit of understanding of when the season is in place. Number eight, lean towards plant-based meals. So eating vegetarian and vegan meals has three main advantages. It's good for your health, it's good for the animals and it's good for the environment and for reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Plant-based proteins like beans, tofu, lentils or chickpeas are often uh, cheaper than animal protein. And further cost savings are delivered by cooking from scratch rather than buying processed foods. Number nine, batch cooking at home. Save money and time by cooking in batch and cut and store conveniently for further use throughout the week. Batch cooking will protect your wallet by reducing impulse takeaways. Number 10, grow your own herbs. 
Put your balcony, windowsill or indoor space to good use and gather some old pots and start growing your herbs. This can not only lower your food bill, it can also be a relaxing and therapeutic experience. Number 11, avoid the bakery. Although this applies probably just to a handful of countries, and in some of them, for example in Germany, people get up really early and stand in very long queues to then buy overpriced bread. Why not get a half an hour extra of sleep and just buy your bread at the supermarket on your weekly visit? You can have the, the a large loaf of bread cut in thin slices and then you can freeze it at home and use as needed. Number 12, check out food waste apps or other in food waste saving initiatives in your region. This varies across countries, of course, but there are some apps coming up that are uh, functioning in many countries, for example, Too Good To Go. And this allows users to go to cafes, restaurants and shops, typically toward the end of the day, and buy some of the leftovers at a very discounted price. Number 13, eating out. Be honest with yourself. Is it a pleasure or is it a habit? Dine out too often and you might find yourself falling into the traps of hedonic adaptation. You may start taking the experience for granted or find yourself comparing the quality of today's food to yesterday's instead of actually enjoying the experience. You Eating out too much is usually one of the key factors undermining our budget. If you're a bit of a foodie and eating out is your main passion, by all means continue with your outings. However, if you only eat out just to avoid cooking, well, maybe it's a good moment to reconsider this costly habit. Number 14, invite people over for dinner. Are you on board with cutting out your expenses with dining out, but worry about the social outcome? There are certainly ways around this. Why not reach out to your friends and organize a potluck at your place next time around? Number 15, energy saving hacks in the kitchen. Okay, I have five tips for you in this category. First, don't use the stove to heat up water and use an electric kettle instead. Use the pot first to determine how much water you really need to boil. Second, cover pots and pans while cooking so you can lower the heat on the stove and use less electricity or gas. Three, double check if your freezer or fridge are set at reasonable temperatures. Fourth, examine your fridge on a regular basis. Have you identified any odd bottle or jam jar sitting towards the back untouched for the past six months? It takes a lot of energy to keep these products cool. Go ahead and eat it. And number five, use the toaster instead of the oven when you can. For example, don't defrost your bread in the oven, but use the toaster instead. Number 16 is organize your fridge. I personally find that when you have an organized refrigerator, it is much less likely that you waste food. Everything is tidy and you're more mindful of what still remains and what needs to be eaten. One idea is to group similar items in designated areas. For example, maybe fruit and vegetables in one place, dairy products in another, and so on. I personally also like to have a small space where I have leftovers uh, that I plan to incorporate into the next meals. This uh, typically avoids uh, food waste quite a bit. Number 17 is smart use of the freezer. And here I have three tips for you. First, use the freezer for prepared meals and for leftovers. Second, freeze some items directly after shopping to reduce the chance of going to waste. For example, I do this with broccoli, which I chop first, and I also do it with bread. And number three, are your bananas ripening too fast? If you think you can eat them in the next few days, definitely go ahead and place them in the refrigerator. Otherwise, cut, go ahead and cut them up and put them in the, in the freezer and you can have some tasty banana ice cream in a few days time. Number 18 is learn to store fresh food to prolong their freshness. For example, root vegetables such as potatoes and carrots should be kept in a cool and dark place. Apples, oranges and pears can be kept at room temperature but away from direct sunlight. Of course here we can have as many tips as there are products. What I would encourage you is to just to Google how to store each product efficiently and then start to incorporate this little by little into your daily routine. Number 19 is take stock of your pantry. Despite our best planning efforts, we often forget about the odd package, can or jar. Review every now and then and try to make a meal out of these products before they go off. Alright, congratulations on making it to tip number 20, which is make a food waste inventory. This at the outset I know sounds quite boring, but trust me, it takes no time and it is extremely worthwhile. So go ahead and place a blank sheet of paper and tape it to the front of your refrigerator and at the start of each month, record every single item that you throw away, it together with the value of the product. 
For example, um, I threw away a yogurt, 25 cents. You throw away two bananas, 40 cents. Half a jar of some random sauce, one euro, and so on. At the end of the month, after 30 days, add up all of your total um, expenses and multiply by 12 and voila, you have your annual estimated food waste uh, bill. Okay, so how much did our household waste uh, in food in a year? So I did this uh, little experiment in September 2023 and despite having already optimized a lot of the ideas that, that I disclosed today, our food waste bill was 15.4 euros, which is 185 euros per year, almost 200 euros that we just literally throw out the window. I certainly wouldn't be happy walking down the street and throwing uh, 200 euros on the ground, <laughs> would you? Why do we feel different about throwing food in the waste can than we do of just throwing a bill on the ground in the street? All right, these are all the 20 food saving hacks that we have for now. Did I miss any? Do you recommend something that works for you? Please let us know in the comments below. As a final takeaway, please take these 20 tips with a grain of salt. The idea is not that you implement every single one of them against your will, but rather that you pick and choose the two or three that resonate with you and that are low uh, behavioral changes that can help you save money. Okay, that's all for now. Good luck. Thanks you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.